Detroit's mayor says he hears the concerns of people who are skeptical of the vaccine as he gets the shot himself. Growing concerns over a variant of the coronavirus hitting hard in the UK. Is it any worse and will our vaccine still work? Paula. Tough, tough, tough year for humans. A fantastically wonderful, great year for canines. I'll explain why. And some lucky ones of us actually saw a little bit of sunshine today. A lot of clouds, but we're going to be flirting with 50 tomorrow before winter finally arrives for Christmas. We'll look at all that right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan leading by example as he outlines the city's plans for the coronavirus vaccine. This afternoon, the mayor rolled up his sleeve and received a dose of Pfizer's vaccine. Starting tomorrow, 1,200 medical frontline workers and EMTs with the Detroit Fire Department will receive the first doses of Moderna's vaccine. The mayor says getting the vaccine will not be mandatory, but he hopes others will get that vaccine when available. We're approaching it with, with empathy understanding our firefighters when they come in tomorrow will have Henry Ford medical staff taking them through uh, the science behind this and helping them make informed decisions. Nobody's going to be bullied, but you're going to have positive messages. I think positive messages will win out. That's what I believe. 30 additional city health care workers will receive their doses so they can vaccinate others. 450 home health care workers are expected to receive the vaccine next week. The state is reporting more than 3,000 new cases. The new numbers include 173 additional deaths, 72 from review of a vital, vital records. As of today, the state's total confirmed cases of coronavirus stands at 466,485. And an outbreak of the virus has forced the Detroit Lions to shut down their practice facility. Two people within the organization have tested positive for COVID-19. It's unclear if the cases involve players, coaches, or staff members. The man arrested in the death of a little girl in Holly Township was arraigned via Zoom today. Samuel Smart charged with first degree child abuse and torture in connection with the death of the three year old Trinity Chandler. Trinity died Saturday. Her family says she had severe bruising and internal bleeding. The family also says Smart, the mother's boyfriend, was watching Trinity while her mom was at work. Smart stood silent and a plea of not guilty was entered on his behalf. An attempt by Larry Nasser to have one of his sentences thrown out has been denied. The former Michigan State gymnastics doctor who sexually assaulted more than 150 girls and young women had claimed Judge Rosemary Aquila showed bias during his sentencing in January of 2018. The Michigan Court of Appeals disagreed, ruling today that any bias showed by the judge was not improper. Nasser is unlikely to ever gain freedom as he serves two 40-year sentences at the county level, along with a 60-year federal sentence. Time now for our first look at the forecast, and things are really going to warm up then. And we'll get a little bit of a spike tomorrow, uh, but once we get into the Christmas holidays, it is right back to winter we go. Here's a look at uh, where things sit right now. Mount Clemens seeing a little bit of some light around those clouds. Got some peaks of sunshine in spots, but temperatures very similar to what we saw yesterday. May have gained a degree or two, but not by much. Mid to upper 30s is where we're at right now, and numbers are going to fall somewhat, but not all that much. We'll only be down to the mid 30s by midnight. A lot of us are going to stay above freezing for overnight lows, but boy, that starts to change as we head towards Christmas. Wednesday evening, we'll start getting some rain. That transitions to snow for both both the 24th and the 25th. So we'll talk about how much we're going to get and those winds gusting near 30 miles per hour. Wait till you see the wind chills on Christmas Day. We'll talk about all of that coming up in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. We are learning more about the new coronavirus strain that's reportedly spreading quickly overseas, prompting the UK to extend its COVID restrictions through Christmas. Scientists are starting to weigh in on the variant of the virus, and our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with the latest. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson believes the new strain is more contagious by 70 percent. Health officials in New York say it's likely already in the U.S. and if it isn't, keeping it out would be next to impossible. But that hasn't stopped efforts to limit exposure. So far, three major airlines have agreed to require pre-flight COVID testing of passengers flying from the U.K. to New York. 
British Airways is starting that new policy today. Delta and Atlantic, uh, Virgin Atlantic, I should say, will do so on Thursday. There are big backups of trucks trying to get out of Britain and into France. The trucks are idling at an airfield due to the decision in France to close the border because of the coronavirus variant. Trains are also at a standstill there. UK officials say they're working with France to get the border reopened as quickly as possible. A lot of people are wondering about the UK variant and the effectiveness of current vaccines and those in development. Well, the World Health Organization's top scientist believes that's not a cause for concern. Even though we've seen a number of changes, a number of mutations, none has made a, a significant impact on either the susceptibility of the virus to any of the currently used uh, therapeutics, drugs, uh, or, the, or the vaccines under development. And one hopes that that will continue to be the case. But this is why we have to continuously monitor. Another big question, does the mutation cause more severe illness? Well, the head of German vaccine maker BioNTech says it's very likely people's immune response once they get the vaccine will be able to adapt to different strains. But he said if necessary, vaccines can be quickly engineered for new mutations. We can directly start uh, to, um, to engineer a vaccine which completely mimics this new, new mutation. And we could be able to provide a new vaccine uh, uh, technically within six weeks. Uh, so that means uh, a vaccine which uh, contains this information. And as you just heard there, the company says it would take about six weeks to come up with new vaccines for new strains. That's not counting, the, though, the time that it would take for regulators to approve it. So right now, the BioNTech vaccine, which was developed together with Pfizer, is authorized for use in more than 45 countries, of course, including ours as well. So, Karen, we'll have much more in the news at 5. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. First of four, we are on top of stories making headlines around the world this Tuesday. The nation's top public health officials appeared on camera today to receive Moderna's coronavirus vaccine. Dr. Anthony Fauci, Health and Human Service Secretary Alex Azar, and National Institutes of Health Director Dr. Francis Collins all got the shot. Thank you so Dr. Much. Fauci says he's optimistic about the vaccine. As important or more important is as a symbol to the rest of the country that I feel extreme confidence in the safety and the efficacy of this vaccine and I want to encourage everyone who has the opportunity to get vaccinated so that we could have a veil of protection over this country that would end this pandemic. Dr. Fauci turns 80 on Christmas Eve, so he is both a frontline medical worker and in that older age group. The second dose of the vaccine will be administered in 28 days. Now, you saw it here on Local 4, President-elect Joe Biden addressing the nation ahead of the Christmas holiday. With Congress striking a deal on a coronavirus aid bill, Biden says it is a step in the right direction, but more needs to be done. This bill is just the first step, a down payment in addressing the crisis the crises, more than one, that we're in. There's a lot more work to do. Early next year, I'm going to put forward to the Congress my plans for what comes next. We'll need more help to fully distribute the vaccine. We're going to need more testing in order to be able to open our schools. We need more funding to help firefighters. And we'll hear more from the president-elect coming up at 5. It's official 2020 was the deadliest year in U.S. history, and that's mainly due to the coronavirus pandemic, with the death toll reaching nearly 320,000 and counting. We won't have final mortality data for the year for months, but preliminary data does show the U.S. is on track to have more than 3.2 million deaths this year, at least 400,000 more than in 2019. That would be the biggest single year increase since 1918. Clearly, there has been a lot to dislike about 2020, unless, of course, you happen to be a dog. With so many people working from home, canines have been getting more quality time than ever with their favorite humans. Plus, more people have been adopting dogs for companionship during the pandemic. Paula Tubman takes a look at just how great this strange year has been for our four-legged friends. For so many humans, this year has just been so horrible, depleting, bone-crushing, just a tough, tough year. But not for dogs. I guess you could call this year the dog days of COVID because canines, well, it's been a great year for them. Things are slim at the Michigan Humane Society, and that's good news. Humans stuck at home, lonely, isolated, or just with extra time on their hands 
have given dogs a new leash on life. We have an incredible demand uh, at all four of our shelters, and we are doing between 150 and 200 adoptions a week right now. So much so that the Humane Society is actually reaching out to other animal rescue leagues to import pets so they can adopt them out. Uh, not only do we obviously um, put up for adoption the animals that come to us either through surrender, through cruelty and rescue, uh, through, uh, through a variety of, of ways in which they end up at our doors, we also pull animals from other shelters that maybe are at risk there. So both locally, regionally, and actually uh, throughout the country, we'll bring in animals uh, so that they have the best chance for adoption right here in a new home here in Metro Detroit. Meet Ryan and Ripley. She's a half French bulldog, half Boston Terrier. Ripley was adopted in June. I'm still working full time. Uh, my wife is home much more. So there's more attention at home, uh, which was a giant plus. And the other offshoot is with a noticeable reduction in unwanted dog pregnancies. There was already a trend of declining dog numbers coming into the shelters. But now couple that with a boon in adoptions. And the Michigan Humane Society currently has a zero a zero euthanasia rate for adoptable pets. Zero, zero animals are losing their lives if they are placeable in this, in this, in our organization right now. It's a better time to be a pet in a home, but it's a good time to be a pet in a shelter right now. Paula Tupman, Local 4. Thank you, Paula. There is a catch though. As much as the pooches are loving the attention, they are missing out on some other important experiences. So ahead of five, Paula explores what dog owners should be doing right now to prepare their pets for that day when people are not home all day long. Still ahead here first at four, a man puts himself in harm's way to save the life of a baby elephant. How he managed to do it despite the danger of other full grown elephants nearby. And next, how Target is trying to win the business of last minute holiday shoppers who don't want to set one foot inside their stores.